Hey everyone, welcome to its Serie A fantasy preview video for game week 12. Um, first, I'm just going to say things have been going really good lately. Uh, thanks for all the comments and it's been fun having some chats and stuff. Please subscribe to the video. We're at 59 followers, one away from 60. So please be that uh, 60th follower and hopefully we can keep going from there. I should say subscriber, not follower. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get right into what the plans are coming up this week. There's a couple transfer ideas that I'm flirting between. Um, games start tomorrow. There's one game and Believers General tomorrow that kind of ruins that extra day of thought. I'll be making the transfer decision soon, probably not too long after this video, because I have an idea of which way I want to go with it. But uh, let me know what you think, and maybe you can sway my mind to think otherwise. Who knows? Okay. But uh, we're just going to look right off the bat. Providel in the in goal, like I say every week. I still have Zoet on the bench in case something changes. He scored well last week, getting four points to keeper. I'll never be upset with that. So I'm going to stick with him for now. Also, playing Torino, there's a possibility of a clean sheet. Not saying anything is guaranteed, especially the way Torino beat uh, Santoria last week. But there's a chance, at least. It's not like they're playing a Milan or a Juve or a Napoli. Not that Juve is a threat right now. Not sour at all. Anyway, uh, moving on to the defense. Really hoping that with Roma play, playing Venezia, I'm able to get a uh, double clean sheet this week. I'm hoping they're also rested in the CONCACAF League. I actually should check on that because games are going on right now. I didn't actually uh, check to see what the lineup was for Roma, but I'm hoping that they're both rested or regardless playing against Venezia. That's a good chance for some double clean sheet points uh, on the Roma defense. We have... Uh, Mary really playing Verona. I hope I said, I, I meant Venezia in case I said Verona before, two V teams. Uh, but Mary Rui facing Verona. Um, I don't see why Napoli can't get a clean sheet against them. They seem like they can uh, keep a clean sheet against anyone right now. Um, and sometimes they don't even need a lot of firepower to do it as they didn't have Oshiman or Insignia play last week. But um, they're there and defensively on that side of the ball, they're doing excellent. So obviously playing Mary and Rui here. Uh, I'm probably gonna give Cambiasso another go. Uh, he did what I needed him to do last week and he played this over 60 minutes. Not sure if it's gonna happen again, but against Ampoli, I think might as well go for it. Um, and Yoshida, I'm gonna give another go against Bologna, Sintoria, another team they can keep a clean sheet against whether they do or not, depends on the day, but there's at least an opportunity there. Uh, moving to the midfield, uh, Kendreva obviously is going to get chosen against Bologna for the same reasons as Yoshida. There's a, ch a good chance that he can get some attacking returns there. Uh, Insignia, he didn't even get brought for the Europa League game, and he didn't play at all in the last Serie A game. So I don't see why he wouldn't play this weekend, um, based on the fact that there's been no flag, there's been no word of any injury or COVID or anything like that. So I think it's just a week of rest for him and he'll be back at it against Verona, which is a good opportunity for him to uh, get some points, especially if he's still on pens, which it seems like he is. Uh, Pasolic, it's been a little cold recently, but against Cagliari, I don't see why he can't at least get around the net, have some opportunities, hopefully get an attack and return there. And then we definitely have Immobile, who, you know what, I'm just going to do the obvious thing and captain him live right here. And so he'll get my captaincy against Salernitana. Hopefully he can do more than what he was able to, uh, than what uh, Insigne and Oshim had were able to do last week, which was not play. Um, and this spot is what I'm curious about. I don't know the extent of Oshim Hen's injury. He used to have the red flag. Now it's gone down to yellow. I don't know if that means he might play this week. Um, against Verona, it would be nice to have him in. So I think I'm just setting up my bench, assuming that he doesn't play. I think I'll have him in the spot if I don't hear for certain that he's not playing. If I do, then I'll just sell him out. That's fine. Um, but if I don't know for certain, I'll probably just give him the spot. And uh, and then if he gets subbed out, he gets subbed out. But that might be complicated based on the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is the uh, transfer that I'm doing. Now, this is the start of Roma's good swing of four fixtures. There's some really good fixtures that they're coming up with. So you can see they got Venezia this week. And I want to bring in my third Roma player this week. Now, here's what... I'm flirting between. Originally, the plan was just going to be to upgrade Ravella 
and bring in either Virtu or Pellegrini. So that's my first thought is out of the two, who do I bring in? Because Virtu, he plays deeper, it seems, but it seems as the last penalties that got taken, he's on the penalties. So whenever Roma gets a PK, Virtu looks like he's the guy stepping up. Pellegrini plays further up the field. He's also overall has more fantasy points so far. And I think as a more recent has been better as well. So I am leaning towards Pellegrini a few weeks ago when I originally thought of getting a Roma midfielder in. I was thinking for two for sure. Now I've kind of switched my mind over and it's 0.1 mil more, but uh, it'll still leave me 0.6 in the bank, even going from 4.5 Ravella to 7.4 Pellegrini. So I think that's the way, that's I think my first choice right now, the way that I'm leaning things right now is bringing in Pellegrini for Ravella. But then that brings up the question, who do I sit this week? All of my players that I have here are good fixtures. I don't know if it would be most smart to put Cambiaso in the first bench spot. And then if Oshimhen doesn't play to uh, put in Pellegrini, or sorry, then if Oshimhen doesn't play, then Cambiaso comes on. Uh, another option is just to take out Oshim Hen and put Pellegrini in, just play with the one striker. And that might make sense because maybe Oshim Hen will only slightly get to play, maybe come on late in the game or start and not get a full even 60 minutes. So there's there, but then I'm risking Oshim Hen playing a full game and having a good game against Verona. Um, the other thing, so if I'm not going the Roma midfield route, the other option is to transfer out Oshiman, which I thought I'd be doing early last week. Um, the only thing is, if I bring in Tammy Abraham, who hasn't been that great recently, I can't get a Roma midfielder at that point anymore. So I'll have three Roma players, as I already have Karsdorp and Ibanez. So the other thing that I'm thinking of is transferring Oshim Hen for Zheko. Now, Zheko, we know, can score in any game. Great striker, no doubt about it. And the reason for that being is after the next two game weeks, then Inter has a great run of fixtures, absolutely fantastic run of fixtures, which is why I'm not getting rid of Barella. Um, Barella, is, this is going to be the first time I sit him on the bench. Facing AC Milan will be hard to get attacking returns for him, especially playing in the midfielder role. So I don't want to get rid of him by any means, but uh, having... Jekko in there in two weeks like by the start of that fixture run I want at least two inter players and I'll probably bring in a third after that that'll be when uh Roma's good run of fixtures is ending so I'll probably end up switching out either Ibanez or Corso or probably Ibanez uh, I'll probably end up switching him out for an inter defender at that point um but yeah so that's my other option is just going from Oshim Hen to uh Ibanez because if I just quickly take a look at the fixtures here. Napoli's good run of fixtures has basically run its course after this week. After this week, they get Inter Milan, Lazio, Sassuolo, and Atalanta. That's a tough run of four fixtures there. And then they get an easy one, Empoli, but then again face AC Milan after that and Juventus two weeks afterwards. So the Napoli fixtures are going to be getting more challenging. And in three weeks when Inter Milan's fixtures are getting good. Well, Roma will still have one more after that, and then they face um, Inter Milan themselves. So I think that's when I end up trying to switch from Roma to Inter, because in uh, game week 14, we got Venezia, then Spezia after that. They face Roma, which will be more challenging. Then you got Cagliari, Salernitana, Torino, and Bologna all in a row. So one, two, three, four. That's about seven out of the next six fixtures starting in game week 14 are absolutely awesome, which is why I do end up wanting to have three Inter Milan players, Barilla probably being one of them, Jaco probably being another, and probably a defender as well. Another player that I will be looking at is Lutero Martinez, but he is a little more expensive, it seems, and we'll look at the transfer stuff. Better, we'll actually go to the transfers right there, right now. Um, so looking at the Roma defenders that I'm talking about first, sorry, um, or Roma midfielders. So we see Pellegrini is at the top by 10 points over two. So these are the two best, uh, midfielders. They're cheap as far as good midfielders go. 
So it's just choosing between them. I'm thinking of going Pellegrini's route with the extra 0.1 mil. Uh, he's obviously already proven to be better so far. The only thing is he's not on the penalties. That's the one route. And then the striker route, where we got Jeco. So far has more points than Martinez, but Martinez wasn't playing the first couple of weeks with the transfer rumors. The issue is I'm not going to have the funds to get uh, Latero if I get upgrade Ravella to um, Pellegrini. The other thing that might be a little more cost effective is if I upgrade Pasolich this week to Pellegrini. That is the other way things can go because if I go Oshimhan to Latero Martinez, and I go Pasolich to Pellegrini. I do have the money for that and still have some of the banks. Geez, that's another good option to go for. It's just, as you see, I do not have a lot of money in midfield anymore, which is okay because I have a good midfield. Uh, that's a lot of money up front, but I might end up uh, selling off Insignia soon because of Napoli's hard run of fixtures coming up. So a lot of options this week as to how to go for transfers. Let me know what you think the best way to go about it is. And, um, oh, I have two in here, that's weird. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think the best option to go about it is. What would you do if you're in my position? What are you doing this week? And uh, send me your thoughts on how fantasy is going so far. I'm gonna end it here. This has been, again, been one of, back to one of a longer video, which is nice. Sometimes it's good to have those. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you after the game week for the review video. Take care.